Hi everyone, welcome to week seven of MBA 583, Strategic Planning and Implementation. For this week, we're gonna talk about the nature of doing business globally, including union issues and language. We're gonna explain the advantages and disadvantages of doing business globally. We're gonna discuss the global challenge facing firms and why this is a strategic issue. And we're gonna compare and contrast American business culture versus foreign business culture and explain why this is a strategic issue. If we think about global and international issues, what we're finding is that the boundaries of countries are really not a limit anymore um, to us doing business. Uh, we want to be able to see and appreciate the world from the perspective of others uh, really has become a matter of how businesses survive. Um, so the, the basic of uh, strategic management really is focused on managers really gaining and understanding our competitors, our markets, our prices, our suppliers, distributors, governments, creditors, shareholders, and customers worldwide. And the price and quality of a firm's products and services has to be competitive on a worldwide basis, not just on a local basis. So if you think of the nature of doing business globally, um, exports of goods and services from the United States account for only 13.5% of the U.S. Um, gross domestic product um, as com compared to German Germany, where it is 45.6%, or the Chinese economy, which is 22.6%. Uh, but we're seeing some changes in these areas as well. So when you think of globalization, we're looking at what is that process of doing business worldwide? Um, and we want to look at this so that we can make dis strategic decisions on what it's going to take for us to be profitable on a global basis. And then from that, we can develop a global strategy, which includes designing, producing, and marketing products with global needs in mind, um, instead of just considering the individual countries um, alone. One way to do this is to have a multinational firm. These are organizations that conduct business operations across national borders. And the strategic management process is conceptually the same for multinational corporations. However, it's, the process is more complex for the international organizations um, because we have more, more variables to consider, more relationships to uh, look at. So what are the advantages of a global business? Well, we can really gain new customers, of course, by going global. Um, our foreign operations can absorb an excess capacity. They can reduce unit costs. They can spread economic risks over a wider number of markets. So if one market goes down like Greece, then we can, uh, we know we have another market that's going to be able to fill in for what we're losing in that area. Uh, foreign operations can allow firms to establish low cost production facilities. <clears throat> in some countries, um, the cost of doing business is less and so we can um, move our production to those countries or maybe raw materials are, are less expensive because we're not having to uh, bring them in from a country into the U.S. And, and do them here. We can just get the raw materials right from the country and produce them in that same area. Um, we may find that we don't have competitors in foreign markets um, or competition could be less intense than in domestic markets. Um, we may have reduced uh, tariffs or reduced taxes uh, or lower taxes and a favorable political treatment by other company, other countries that want um, U.S. products, U.S. companies to come in. Sometimes we go into international companies in a joint venture and that's um, a positive area because it really um, can enable the firm to learn the technology, the culture, the business practices of other people, and then we can make our contacts with potential customers, suppliers, creditors, distributors in foreign countries by going in as a joint venture, which means that the, we are um, establishing a partnership with a company that is already established in that culture. Uh, we can gain economies of scale and our power and prestige in domestic markets, markets may be enhanced. Um, if we can compete globally. Now, some of the disadvantages of global business is that foreign operations could be seized by um, national domestic uh, factions in those countries. Um, some of our international companies could um, confront different and often little understood social, cultural, uh, demographic, environmental, political, governmental, legal, technical, economic, and competitive forces. So when we looked at that, um, doing our external analysis in previous weeks. We're going to have to redo this in the global business and we really need to talk to the right people to make sure we have a good picture of what it's like in that culture. Um, we might find a weakness of competitors in foreign lands are often um, overestimated and the strengths are often underestimated. So we have to be careful there. Sometimes just doing business is difficult because of the language, the culture, um, how things differ. 
um, in the United States, we wouldn't ever give someone cash in order to do business. We'd consider that a bribe, but in other countries, that's a standard way of doing business and there's nothing wrong with it. In a lot of Sp uh, Spanish cultures, um, you do you talk to the leader of the company and then once they invite you to their home, then you're considered um, to be able to you know, go forward with the, the deal. Uh, it's like you're in the family, which is great. So the global challenge though is that America's economy is becoming much less American. We talked in previous weeks about how diverse the American um, economy is. We have people from all different countries and in the coming years, we won't have one major nationality in our country anymore. Um, the world economy and monetary systems are emerging and markets are shifting rapidly and in many cases converging in taste, trends and prices. So what we find is that few companies can afford to ignore the presence of international competition. So whereas we used to think just we were competing in our local markets, we really are competing internationally. Um, American versus uh, foreign business culture. So to be successful in the world markets, us US managers have to have a better knowledge of the history, the culture, the religious forces that motivate and drive people in other countries. Um, for multinational firms, this means having a knowledge of the business culture and how it varies across countries can really be important for gaining and sustaining competitive advantage. You might want to look at the website worldbusinessculture.com where you can select a country and check out how business culture varies in that area versus other um, places. Some cultural pitfalls to avoid to be a better manager. In some countries, waving is an insult. Um, in other countries, it's um, perfectly okay. Um, a man named Carlos Lopez Garcia should be addressed as Mr. Garcia in Latin America, but as Mr. Excuse me, as Mr. Lopez in Latin America, but as Mr. Garcia in Brazil. Um, in a lot of countries, um, breakfast meetings are considered uncivilized. We wouldn't do that. Um, in Japan, it's not appropriate to make direct eye contact. Um, snapping your fingers is considered vulgar in France and Belgium. And in China, you want to leave some food on your plate to show that your host was so generous that you could not finish. Some additional cultural differences between U.S. and foreign managers. Americans place a really high uh, priority on time. We view time as an asset, but in many foreign places, they place more worth on relationships. Um, in some countries, personal touching and, and distance, uh, what we would call our personal space in the United States is different. Uh, when I first worked for one organization in South Florida, I went to meet with our purchasing manager and he um, came at me to kiss me and I wasn't used to that coming from uh, more of the West Coast. Um, but he is from Argentina and of course you would kiss him the cheek when you uh, meet someone for business. Um, <clears throat> if we continue on, family roles and relationships vary in different cultures. Um, I have friends from Jordan and um, the husband does most of the talking, um, the wife doesn't talk. Uh, and in business and daily life in some societies are governed by religious factors, so time is spent um, around the, the daily prayers. Many cultures around the world value modesty, team spirit, collectivity, and patience much more than being um, competitive. Um, in Asian markets, we find that they're looking for the collective rather than the individual. In the United States, we tend to uh, focus on the individual more than the collective. Um, and I know uh, sometimes with my Latin friends, uh, when I say we're meeting at 9, that means uh, 9.45, 10 o'clock to them. To me, it means 9. So we have to think about the difference in the value of time and punctuality. Um, eating habits can be different across different cultures. And then rules of etiquette vary, and we really have to learn these rules before we go into other markets. Well, that's it for week seven. Thank you so much.